Hey guys, it's Julesy, and we are out here. It's a bit frigid, you know, it's a bit cold, but we're out here with Malik Ducard, who is the Director of Content Partnerships. Did I say that correctly? You got it right. I got, you got it right, right. At, you. YouTube. at YouTube. And we're gonna have a really great conversation. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. It's great to see you. It's good to see you. Yeah. It's always good to see always you. To so see. he is going to answer some questions that are really pertinent to the YouTube content creator world. You know, I be thinking about the folk. I'm doing it, taking one for the team. We're gonna answer some of them questions about AdSense. <laughs> about how to get popping, how to get promoted. Yep, Why yep. don't we see more black people on YouTube? You know, we're gonna handle all of that. And so we're gonna have a great discussion. We're gonna, we're gonna chop it up. With Malik, yeah. Cool, all right, let's do it. Thanks for, for having me. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan. Like we've, we've been knowing each other for um, a minute now. And uh, yeah, just really, really happy to be here. We so. originally met at an event in Charleston, in South Carolina. In Charleston, Carolina. South Carolina, yes. that's right. That that's was right. great for the Google, the black Googlers. Yeah. Yeah, we did yeah. a panel discussion yeah. about yeah. using your voice. Yeah. So here we are, what, using four years voice. later, right. using our voice. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so let's get into the questions that are like on top of everyone's mind, which is always monetization. It's yeah. a big thing. For me personally, I don't really rely on AdSense. Mm -hmm. I think there's like this misconception that essentially from like the mainstream or people just like most, a lot of YouTubers that believe that they come into this and in order to make money off of YouTube, that they need to be like Eliza Koshy. They need mm -hmm. to be like super popular, really high engagement, really high views. However, I do believe, well I know mm -hmm. that there are other ways to earn income Absolutely. on YouTube outside of solely relying on AdSense. Yeah, yeah. Um, and in ways that you can hold on and maybe do more niche content or, you know, have a stronger sense of brand integrity without having to sell yourself this idea of it's all mm -hmm. about, you know, AdSense. Do you have any yeah. thoughts on that? Yeah, a absolutely. Um, you know, I think that the, there's, there's a few areas here that we've been re really working hard at. Um, so, you know, one thing that we're, we're doing is building out a lot of alternative monetization um, streams so that creators can really leverage the, the footprint and the audience that they have and that they've worked hard at growing. Um, for example, merchandise is something that a lot of creators are, are really, you know, focused on and, and building up revenue streams around. One of the, the early things that we've done is with a, a company called Teespring, mm -hmm. um, where creators are able to actually directly in their channels uh, uh, sell t-shirts, sell merchandise, and, and have a, a transaction that completes um, through through YouTube. And that's just you know one of the starting points, and we're really working hard at, at growing that. Um, another area that we're focused on is um, specifically around channel memberships, where creators are able to, um, for you know, four ninety nine a month or, or some stated price, uh, uh, offer up extra content, uh, uh, extra sort of fanship uh, 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 pieces uh, that the creators can offer up to, to those super fans for uh, a channel membership. We we also probably about two years ago bought a company called Famebit that um, we've incorporated deeply in into to YouTube and it's a division of YouTube. What's so great about Famebit is that brands and sponsors get matched up with creators and a brand might have a specific thing that they're focused on and, and will essentially tee up an RFP that... Um, wait, wait, we don't, we're not Google uh, people so we don't get acronyms. <laughs> so uh, uh, a, a proposal, you yeah. know, let, let, let's say it's brand X and they're, they're looking for a partnership on a video to, mm. to help support one of their products products or a mission that they have, creators will be able to look at that proposal and if that brand is something that's authentic to the creator, if it's a fit with the, the, the creator, um, the creator might say, you know what, yeah, this one's for, for me and let me put in a pitch um, to match up with this brand. And, and it's, it's an area that's growing really, really quickly and, and one of the things that I love about it is that it's really important that creators can, can be their authentic self. Like if they don't like a certain brand, you know, they don't have to lean into that. But if they do and if they're passionate about it, they can, you know, create a video or have a, a sponsor title card mm -hmm. um, that that's really sort of natural to, to what, you know, their their um, uh, interests are and match up with the brand. And the brand is looking yeah. for that authenticity as well. How does YouTube decide what creators get brand deals? There's a short answer and a longer answer that the short answer is that it, it, it really isn't YouTube that, that decides. Mm -hmm. What we work really hard at is making sure that the brand
brands have, the information, the data on the marketplace, um, the, the insights to, to make you know, choices and to, to you know, really determine where they invest um, you know, their dollars into. And, and you know, YouTube, we're, we're working really, really hard to, to open eyes uh, to open up opportunities, and and you know one, one thing you know, I mentioned is the the YouTube Black Brand Summit that we did yesterday is a great example of getting you know large uh, important brands into you know a place and a time, a single place and a time to really show them the value and the opportunity, um, the the big opportunity in this YouTube Black space to 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 get on board to to invest more. Part of my background, like way back in the day, two decades ago, um, <laughs> going way back. I used to work in advertising. So yeah. like I was on Madison Avenue mm -hmm. and, and worked at a, an, an ad agency. And, and I remember as you know a, a, a black team member in uh, uh, an ad agency, one of the things that I was focused on with others is how can we open up the eyes of advertisers mm -hmm. who were our direct clients on the, the value of uh, black dollars and, and the, the, the value of the black consumer. Yeah, I used to work at an ad agency on Varick Street. Oh, wow, wow, get out of here. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's kind of what's helped me understand yeah. that like I don't always have to rely on AdSense. There are, for me, working at an ad agency explains how I can brand myself even with a niche audience, yeah. a niche audience, however you say the yeah, word, yeah. and making sure that like I know how to sell my value even though I tend to skew with my engagement and stuff, skew as a medium-sized YouTube channel versus yeah. Yeah. it's seeming like only the bigger channels yeah. get sponsorship opportunities. Yeah. My audience is actually thinking of mostly as like adult black people and black women who don't, f who feel like maybe it's much harder for them to become successful on YouTube. I think part of that that I don't see discussed a lot is actually how the YouTube algorithm works mm -hmm. in that, um, like most social media, it's meant to keep you on the website, right? Yeah. So it's going to feed you the content that you know that they can tell you're already watching. And I think that creates an inherent bias, right? Mm -hmm. And that we, a lot of us, when we start on something new, we'll tend to, and we're all guilty of it, we will look for what looks like us, right? right? right. That's what we connect with first. And so with that, the algorithm will constantly show you stuff that's going to look like you. So like my front page is like all black women and yeah. I have no idea what most of the other side, I'm like, I don't even know how many sides there are to YouTube, yeah. but every once in a while I'll kind of like trip into something new and I'm like, wow, this whole new world. I didn't even like, even here at YouTube black going, I went up to somebody yesterday and was like, oh, put your YouTube channel in. And I'm like, oh, just casually 2 million. Okay. <laughs> Hi, nice to meet you. That explains the Balenciaga. Okay, nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah. Um, but do you think that maybe that the way YouTube works kind of creates an echo chamber? And is there anything that YouTube, or is there anything that YouTube can do or that they are doing maybe, especially in this political climate, to kind of counter that? Yeah. The mission of YouTube is to, to give everyone a voice and show them the world. And that's like one of the foundational like principles that, that we have. Um, it isn't give everyone a voice and show them a slice of the world. We, we actually have a whole initiative internally uh, called a machine learning or mm -hmm. machine learning fairness project to, to really make sure that our systems and, and the machines that really do this at scale across you know 1.9 billion uh, 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 monthly logged in users and, and lots of you know viewership you know every every month every day um, to, to do this in a, in a thoughtful way at scale mm -hmm. um, uh, without bias so how much is, of this is really YouTube's responsibility and how much of this is like do you think may, there might be some points where we can train the viewers there, there's a, a, a lot that we need to be thinking about about digital media literacy. Viewers and just like people, society in general, really need to, to scrutinize the information that, that they get. But I also think it is very important for the, the social media platforms, for platforms like YouTube, to make sure that it is teeing up the right information so that people can make those discerning mm -hmm. um, uh, decisions and understanding the, the sources of, of information. So one thing that we've done on the news side, actually, in the last uh, um, you know, cu couple of months, in the last year or so, is with, with news, we're bringing in um, sort of official news sources um, and and you know teeing that up 
for users to, to, to be able to see that on YouTube, as well as bringing in signals uh, onto YouTube. So when you're on a channel and getting news on a channel, you have you know a little bit of an icon and information on um, from where this news comes, so you understand the source. Yeah, of I was. What I you're think watching. I was watching something from Al Jazeera, and you were like Al Jazeera. Well, not you, but YouTube. It's like <laughs> and I like was... like light gray italics <laughs> above. It says Al Jazeera is owned by the Qatar government. Right. Yes. Right. That's right. So we we want to be able to give give the right information mm -hmm. so that people can can you know understand where that information is coming from. Is there anything or any tips you can give for people like myself who are the content creators with the ingrained bias that comes in with sort of as you said machine learning and algorithms right that are supposed to keep you watching? Is there anything that we can do maybe to like train our viewers or to counter it or like is there any way that we can be a benefit to the system, yeah. right? Um, you know, I, I, I would say that, you know, th this is this is something that's like always evolving. Mm -hmm. um, and my, my number one, you know, feedback to, to creators is just be the authentic self. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, that that's the um, drive that that drives longevity. Mm -hmm. um, and and these classifiers that, that really help to match up viewers with creators, you know, content with eyeballs, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's essentially, you know, driven by, you know, creators and, and viewers. And, and the classifiers are, are, are really just a bridge between the two. So I think it's important that, you know, creators like in that equ equation, um, you know, not necessarily try to like box into the classifiers, uh, but really open up to who they are. Because mm -hmm. if the viewers want to watch the creators, then, then it that that linkage will happen. I'm in Creators for Change, right? Which Absolutely. is a social impact initiative yeah, by YouTube. Yeah. Um, and thank you and congratulations. Well, thank it's, you. It's, it's a, a it's a great opportunity. I'm really happy to be a part of it. I'm really excited for my project to come out. Yeah. But how do people in general find out about the social impact initiatives that YouTube has going on? Sure. Um, we're really excited about the, mm -hmm. the social impact initiatives just in, in, in general. I'd say you know, just one like, quick tactical thing is on the uh, YouTube Creators blog, we have a lot of information that comes out about that. Um, there's also a, a, a YouTube social impact site. Um, but we're, we're going to be rolling out more in this space. And one of the specific things I'm really excited about here is that we, we just in beta uh, rolled out a new suite of tools called YouTube Giving. And one is the, the beta donate button that we just yeah. rolled out um, uh, literally, you know, a cu couple of weeks ago, maybe, you know, a month or two ago. Oh, wow. And it's on Connor Franta's Creative for Change That's video. That's right. Yeah. That's right doing a fun and 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 yeah. with with this button um create and, and by the way the button is going to roll out a, a little bit more broadly later on this year but really in the first half of next mm -hmm. year um will will expand out you know much much wider um but creators are able to to tee up a nonprofit, mm -hmm. uh, a charity a specific cause um that that they're involved with and ask their you know supporters, their fans, their subscribers um, uh, to 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 donate. And and in the early beta, I got to tell you, it's going really really well. Yeah. Um, we did something uh, in addition to to Connor, something with um, St. Jude's uh, Children's Cancer Hospital. Mm -hmm. Um, with a, an animal nonprofit called Hope for Paws, and it's raised about four hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars in just a few weeks. So, so I really see uh, a big opportunity for um, you know just you know all of us to to help um, society you know through uh, some of these mm -hmm. tools that will be coming out. How do other YouTubers get involved? Like, if there's a YouTuber who wants to do more content around advocacy work, around policy change, and like advocating for um, oppressed minorities and oppressed groups. Um, I think the hard part for me was when I first started was getting the access to information. And I know YouTube does on some level do some programs where they give, they help the YouTuber get access to the information, whether they're doing trainings or events. So how do other, the broader sense of YouTubers kind of yeah, slide yeah. themselves into this space if this yeah. is where they want to be. Um, so you know, I, we'll we'll have you know some more turnkey ways of, of doing mm -hmm. this. 
um, like the donate button, broader initiatives, um, you know, I would say, you know, just reach out to us. Yeah, um, I hit, hit up LinkedIn and I started searching for <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. what I did. And yeah. I figured out the email nomenclature and just started emailing that, people. Yeah, yeah. I, it worked. You hustle. Yeah. Right, right, right. Um, we we want to make it easier than mm-hmm. that, candidly. You know, that that's, um, I'm glad you did that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but one, one of our lessons is, you know, let's have, you know, more sort of, um, you know, social giving, you know, turnkey central places where, you know, creators, you know, at scale can come to a central place to find out more mm-hmm. information. I've been on YouTube since what, like 2011, so it's mm-hmm. like seven years. Mm-hmm. And like, there's this thing about your your YouTube livelihood is really like two to three years if you do mm-hmm. the same thing and then you kind of have to reinvent. And I've seen a few people try to reinvent themselves who are in my age group, you know, we're yeah. over 30. <laughs> Um, and try to gear themselves towards teenagers. Because it does, I think, when I think people think of YouTube, they tend to think of teenagers. Um, And even some of the products that have rolled out seem geared more towards a teenage audience, like the Mm -hmm. whole join feature, like the fan club Mm -hmm. type stuff. Is that, am I wrong? Am I off base? Um, um, It's it's a lot of people, and it's, you know, more than than teenagers yeah. and um, it isn't only give teenagers a voice there's there's, there's definitely um, there's actually a whole category of uh, youtuber that we lovingly call skill tubers mm. who are you know everyone from uh, uh, nurses who uh, are inspiring like another generation of nurses or um, you know, the, the, there's a whole channel called Excel is Fun that's about... Um, <laughs> is it fun? <laughs> right? they I make can, it fun? They, they make it fun. Okay, and, I have and, to check and, it out. And you know what? I, I, I was meeting with the creator the other day that um, watched that channel a bunch and it helped her get a job at NASA. And, and there's so much, you know, sort of diversity in, in viewership and, mm-hmm. and types of um, education and, and, and other categories on, on the platform. But, but I, use, I, I use learning and education as an example of, you know, the, the type of diversity of audience that we have. So are you guys rolling anything out for the multicultural markets? Because like I said, you know, doing Creators for Change, realizing yeah. how big like the India, Indonesia market is, yeah, yeah. the Middle Eastern market. Yep. Of course, the continent of Africa is wide open, yeah. you know, for someone to come in and cultivate that space. But are there any things that you're rolling out in those markets? Yeah, so um, international is is huge. Yeah. Um, Africa is huge. By the way, I went to, to the motherland for the first time. Where'd you go? Last year to South Africa. Oh, know, okay. Yeah, that's always a went. good trip. Yeah, 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 yeah. I went to Watch Joburg some, and Cape some, Town. Some of your videos. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> uh, so thank you for those. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, but we're, we're, we're rolling out uh, uh, versions of, or a version of YouTube called YouTube Go mm-hmm. that is specifically meant for emerging markets. Um, it takes up less data? It takes up less data. Okay, that was for, a big issue when I was in Ghana trying to yeah. watch video. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. it data, takes up less yeah. data. Um, it, it's for bandwidth, uh, sort of Wi Fi, mm-hmm. mobile constrained uh, uh, areas. As you mentioned, you know, YouTube is very. Um, international uh, and and you know the the latest you know I think you know some of our latest stats is that YouTube is about 20% you know here you know US domestic mm-hmm. and 80% international do, do you see a lot of uh, uh, sort of global diversity in your viewership through your analytics or any anything surprising that that's come up for for you in your analytics and yeah respect? I did an event in London and it sold out Oh, wow. Yeah, it sold out twice. We kept kept having to add tickets. And I was like, oh, I didn't realize how much of my audience were international just because they appreciated me being an African-American and having an interest in culture. Yeah. Right? And that, like, I know a lot about various cultures, or I know enough about various cultures, and I respect all cultures, and I love my culture. And so I think that's really, like, kind of brought, especially um, having 
an audience here that might be like a multi-hyphenate black and that they are a child of an immigrant in their first, second generation mm -hmm. and wanting to learn more about African-American culture themselves mm -hmm. and also have someone who like, you know, shows like, a, it's like a mutual cultural exchange. Yeah. And so realizing that I have an audience that, like I went to Ghana and I was getting recognized on the street and I was just like, this is, yeah. you know, it wasn't people necessarily that lived in Ghana, but like they were home for the holidays. And so they, they were either from like the UK or from the States. Yeah, yeah. And you know, they watch my content. That's great. Yeah. And it's beautiful. And like, I, th I think it also speaks to a, a lot of the common ground that mm -hmm. we, we sit on, um, you know, as a society with other cultures and uh, a lot of that exchange where, you know, you can see, you know mm -hmm. what, this might be a specific experience I'm having right here in, in my pocket, but somebody else is having something that is not, you know, that dissimilar. The thing that I have been telling content creators more recently, you know, that I interact with in person is, you know, if you really want to grow your brand, you know, as I said before, like embrace your culture yeah. and really, and more, even more so, think about the way in which something that you relate to isn't being spoken to and fill that void, Yeah. right? Because sure, the market's always oversaturated, but there's always some conversation that people are yearning to have that's not being had in the way that they would like it to. And so there's always room to kind of grow your brand and yeah. grow your platform. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you have any last parting words for the content Ooh. creators out there or even for the audience out there? Like if there's one sage piece of advice. Yeah. Can we get a one-liner? <laughs> oh, man, a one-liner. <laughs> Final words of wisdom. Um, yeah, I would just go back to uh, authentic, authenticity. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know when, when creators, when anyone, uh, but specifically with the creator lens and creators in mind, that authenticity, that originality, that creativity, um, that is, is really, really what what drives um, uh, viewership, it drives YouTube, and it drives longevity. And, and I'd also say, along with that creativity, is innovation. You know, what, what I see with creators, with, with you, with, with so many, is that, you know, you're, you're taking the, you know, so I grew up in, in the Bronx in mm -hmm. the 1980s. On when, the south side? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, in, at the, in a time and place where, like, yeah. you know, Hip hop was being born. Creators are taking the two turntables and a mic of the YouTube system and really remixing it, redesigning it, and making it something bigger and better than than you know what what YouTube had even imagined originally. Mm -hmm. So um, I thank you and and creators for that. Well, thank you for sitting down and having this conversation with me. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much. All these questions. Thank you. Thank you. I really <laughs> hope the audience enjoys it and finds some insight. I would definitely say sign up for the YouTube Creator newsletters. Yes. We mentioned a lot of things, and oftentimes, you know, like I, I get the newsletter, so I see where they announce it. You know, they announce when the next up applications are open, and I think maybe a lot of people, maybe they're going to their spam or they're not reading the yeah. emails. But if you want to know what YouTube is working on, the initiatives that you can take part in or apply in, definitely yeah. sign up for those newsletters. Yep. If there was one tip that we gave you guys, what was the most insightful? What do you think would be the most successful type of YouTube channel? Ooh. What do you think is the most successful type of YouTube channel? Is it beauty? Is it gaming? What do you think is really hitting? You know, I, I funny enough, now I'm into this, uh, I try to do a Bob Ross painting. Oh. That's been my favorite. <laughs> oh, I, I think it's gonna be like the new next trend. All right, leave your comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching. Deuces. Thank you. Bye.